Hello, uh, my name is Ian McCauley. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity to explain what happened in my ABA final against Carl Krug way back in 1985. Uh, there were 10,000 people at Wembley Arena that night and 10 million watched it later on in BBC One. The first round was a very quiet round. Carl had a good look at me and I had a good look at Carl. Harry Carpenter, the commentator, thought that Carl just nicked the first round. But my brother Paul, who was at Wembley that night, thought that I won it. But then he would, wouldn't he? The second round was one of the most brutal and exciting rounds ever seen. I caught Carl with a right hand over the top and his gum shield flew out. Carl received a standing eight count and was brought back to his corner to have his gum shield washed and put back into his mouth giving him an extra 20-30 seconds to recover. When we were allowed to box on, I was on Carl like a harbour shark and was close to giving Carl a second count when he landed with a left hook that caught me flush. I felt the punch, but I showed no effects to it as the ref moved in to give me a stand in the account. I wasn't hurt, and as I'm getting the count, I'm walking towards Carl not taking my eyes off him. I remember thinking, he's got the momentum now, I must get it back, I must. Carl was a sharpshooter, and as I started to make mistakes, Carl started to make me pay. Then I put everything into a heel Mary of a left hook as both my feet left the canvas, which left me off balance. I'm gonna show you now what I mean. Uh, I put everything, I, I, I rolled and I leaped and I, my two feet come off the ground and I threw a big left hook which just missed him and he just tapped me with a right hand and I lost my, my balance. Uh, my legs, uh, I, I tried to recover, I nearly went through the ropes and out of the ring but uh, the referee gave me a standing count and I was furious uh, because it was a balance thing, I wasn't hurt. Carl wasn't a big puncher, he was a very sharp puncher and he buzzed me a couple of times but he didn't seriously hurt me. And uh, anyway, uh, so there you have it. Uh, please don't think I'm trying to take any credit away from Carl. I'm just telling the truth as I see it. I'm the only one who can say if I was hurt and it was me who took the punch. It was only a tap. It was uh, innocuous. Even TV commentator Harry Carpenter said, Macaulay's legs have gone. But that wasn't the case, honestly. As a Christian, I wouldn't lie. Uh, and then when I was getting the count, I went to lean back in the ropes, because I knew the ropes were behind me, and then I near misjudged them. And that would have been terrible. That would have been, if the referee had stopped it, that would have been shocking. That would have been hard for me uh, to live with. So, uh, as Carl rushed in to finish it, thinking I was hurt, he loaded up on a big right hand. But my dad always preached to me, catch him coming in. It doubles the impact. It's almost as if you're punching twice as hard. Uh, so, that's what happened. Carl rushed in thinking I was hurt and we both loaded up the full big rights. I beat Carl to the draw, landing first. Carl went down in a heap and I still remember an awful crunchy noise. It was Carl's nose breaking in three places. Carl, being the warrior that he is, got to his feet and was willing to continue. But such was the damage to his nose that the ref had no other option but to stop the fight. I had become the first man from Belfast to win the Senior ABA Championships since Jack Gartland won them in 1928. Me and Carl are still in touch with each other. Carl went on to bigger and better things, winning the British and Commonwealth professional titles, defending them titles four or five times, and boxing twice for the European crown. Carl was also number five rated lightweight in the world when Pernell Whittaker was undisputed world lightweight champion. 
I was one of Carl's biggest fans. I also had a win over Carl's brother Nigel. Another brother Peter also boxed as a pro. The fight with Nigel was close. It could have easily have been two losses to me, uh, to Nigel and Carl, but I suppose I got that wee bit of luck. Uh, I'm just going to finish now. I just wanted to explain that. That's the truth as I see it. Uh, my legs didn't go. Carl hadn't got the power to, to seriously hurt me. Uh, he was a sharpshooter. Uh, he buzzed me a few times, but he didn't seriously hurt me. And my legs didn't go. Uh, I'm just going to read this wee poem. It's called Our Down. Our Down. R O U R R Down. And that's the area I'm from, and I've lived there all my life. Never was there a more resilient people. The spirit of 69 still lives on. I have lived in Ardoin all my life, through all the trouble and strife, when murder and displacement was rife. 60 years, 30 of war and 30 of peace, to see Ardoin prosper and its population increase. And don't forget the President of Ireland was from Ardoin, Mary Magalise. Nearly all the corner shops were in the old district. Toms, Rocks, Reeds, Blacks, Davisons, Andes. Also Chippies, Greasy Nellies and McNobs with ready to eat food to sell. Where I would spend 10p and a white polyesterine cup of mushy peas or a cup of stew which was 10p as well. Our time was full of drinking clubs. The Star, GAA, Hibs, Saunders, Shamrock, Highfield and even Toby's Hall. My dad Coco was barred for fighting in the mall. There were some amazing characters from the old Ardoin. Too numerous to mention, quite an illustrious group to join. Hatchet, Jagger, Heavy Head and Big Junior as well. I will love Ardoin with all my heart right to the final bell. Thank you very much for listening.